Greetings and welcome to another one of these LGR unboxing of donations things. Look at all of this excellence that has shown up due to your generosity over the past four or five months or so. I usually do two or three of these unboxings per year and this is the very first one for 2021. So yeah, let's just jump right into this and see what kind of retro goodies y'all have sent into the channel. First one here is from Aaron in Ireland. Huh. Ooh, well, that's a lovely scene. Neat. And we got a little message here from Aaron. Included our two dongles for three com fast Etherlink PCMCIA cards. Fantastic. Hope you find them useful. Thanks for that. Many years of videos. You're very welcome. And thank you for those dongles. I had a number of these cards without the little attachments. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, precisely what I was looking for and can use. Those are some nice dongles, Aaron. Ah, my chair. But yeah, they go in a card like this. There are all kinds of these three com adapters. They all do basically the same thing. There's some for dial up, some for Ethernet. This is the one for Ethernet, so I can get uh, networking on all kinds of older laptops. This is great. And the next one here is from Axel in Sweden. Oh yeah, this, this is exciting. <laughs> Look at the setup for this, that, okay. So yeah, this is uh, first of Axel's release on mechanical music label Spinning Rust. Started it because in a world of solid state media, surely people must be missing the sound of clicking tone arms and screeching platters. I know I do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, you can read the rest of this here, but the gist of it is he's taking music and uh, a lot of it made on hardware synths. Props for that. Ooh, look at all this. Yeah, and uh, putting it on hard drives, like actually releasing the music on spinning hard disks. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, I mean, I've seen all kinds of different music releases on all kinds of floppies and, of course, other magnetic media cassettes and, and all sorts of things, but spinning hard disks? This appears to be a SATA thing, 5400 RPM drive. Look at that. Got some acid, perhaps, and which I would expect with a 303 being used. Uh, this is really cool. I'm gonna have to plug this in real quick. Hey. Yeah, check it out. Oh, yes. Dude, that is spectacular. Yeah, what a unique way to release music. And uh, man, I can imagine a little perilous shipping around the world because, you know, spinning platters. And again, thank you. Um, consider me a fan of Ragnar Atari. Alrighty, got one here from Sean. Oh yes. Ah, awesome. This is a Viking two-way phone line simulator. This will be highly useful for doing quick little tests of things. Yeah, check it out. It's just a little Delightful little beige box. Needs a little bit of power. And you got uh, plugs there, RJ11, to connect to phones or phone-related devices to make them ring. Two-way communication. No, so it is a little bit more than that. So uh, two-way communication between standard telecom products, modems, fax machines, and then all, you know, yeah. Yeah, check it out. Compatible with fax machines and modem speeds up to 28.8. So here are some examples of what it can do, some different setups. This is really cool. Um, a more compact solution for some of this. I've actually been trying this with uh, like repurposing an ATA and you know doing some experiments with that. that. That allows me to do some different things in terms of setting up my own kind of dial-up network at home. But this is gonna be really useful for testing out all kinds of phone products. Uh, like I've got a lot of these like telephone mouse devices where it's like literally a landline phone built into a computer mouse, things like that.
Hello? What are you doing calling me? I told you never to call here anymore. Get off my phone. Yeah, I got it. Crazy spammers. Dude, this is awesome. Thank you very much. Man, I'm already psyched for like every single thing I've gotten. <laughs> I want to use all of them right now, but I got like a million more to unbox. Okay, got one here from Eric. I see a modular synth thing. Ooh, cool pin. But yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's got an LGR uh, thing written on there. Look at this thing. STG Sound Labs. Yeah, I remember uh, getting an email from him about this. This looks like a wonderfully squelchy filter. I love those knobs. Uh, yeah, thank you so, so much for this. Uh, I, I'm really, really into the whole Eurorack modular stuff these days. I uh, did a video on an LGR a while back. If you haven't seen that, do check it out. It's like we got a few different connections there, but we got the Eurorack power. This is going to go into the bus board that I have in my Eurorack. Uh, this is awesome. Here's a quick example of the kind of thing it can do. So yeah, this is wonderful. Again, absolutely love the knobs. The general aesthetic of this is super cool. Check out STG Sound Labs if you're curious. Thanks again to Eric. This one is from Garth. Sweet name. Oh, hey. Got a note on top. Nice touch. Greetings from California. Greetings back, Garth. From the last unboxing video you made, someone sent you a Hercules 3D Profit 4500. Yes, indeed. Uh, shuffling through old hardware boxes and found a 3D Profit 4000 XT PCI version. Lots of memories with that card from Journeyman Project Turbo to Quake 2. Literally both of them sitting on the shelf right beside me. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for sending over your old card. Ooh, -hoo. there we go. Got the, the late model Hercules. <laughs> Later on, they use these really cool blue PCBs like this. this the 3D Profit 4000 XT PCI. Got a heatsink on the back side. I don't have too many uh, really capable PCI graphics cards from this time, so this is awesome. Looks like it's probably got 32 megs of RAM. Yeah, really cool stuff. Thank you very much. All right, got one here from oh, the 8 bit guy. Hey, David. I am expecting robots nice yeah i always like these boxes and the packaging that uh, he puts these in for his games so this is attack of the petsky robots for the commodore pet 64 and vic 20. that is really cool i wish my commodore pet was working right now i mean it, it kind of is it's got this weird issue where i turn it on and after about like 30 seconds it just freezes i've replaced all the memory i've replaced the cpu replaced a couple other chips and i can't quite figure out what's going on so i might have to try this out on one of the other systems that this is for but either way yeah look at that so it's got the uh, snes controller adapter uh, Texelec collaboration going on there that is so cool to put inside of a box for a, a newly released game for old systems yeah Classic. This is a flippy disc. Yep. Got the notches on either side. And of course, 
some awesome documentation. All of his games have uh, really impressive manuals, honestly. Uh, yeah, this is, this is really cool. I've been intrigued to try this out. Look at all those different versions and the different systems. Really cool stuff. This is a deceptively heavy one for how small it is, relatively. And this is from Stuart. I see Merry Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas to you, too, in April of 2021 from Segmaster01. Thanks for always providing an interesting and engaging content for the LGR and LGR Blurbs channels. You're very welcome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Parts for the monorail PC. Yeah, some add-ons. Uh, apparently, the card appears to be just standard 3Com Etherlink 3. Well, there you go. With a smaller PCB. Yeah, that was the thing. The expansion possibilities on the monorail PC that I covered on LGR a while back were rather limited because of uh, just the like smaller vertical kind of size that's inside of the expansion card area. Also included are the CPU as well as original three and a half inch floppy and quad speed CD-ROMs and also a strange sound card in there. Uh, an M-Wave. <laughs> those cards, I have interesting memories of those in particular, not not good memories, but um, yeah, it was kind of IBM's Oh, Sound Blaster compatible clone thing. Yeah, here we, here we go. Look at this. There's like a driver disc. That's cool. Don't have this. I do have a lot of M-Wave cards, but perhaps not the one that's in here. They're kind of useful in a pinch, but I remember they just caused so many problems in terms of compatibility and instability is what I remember most. But maybe that was just bad experiences in high school. This right here, we have a Mitsumi CD-ROM drive from 1996. Yeah. That's awesome. Quad speed. I like the uh, very basic front part of this. This could be a replacement for the one in the monorail. Same with the floppy disk drive. This is by... Yep, also Mitsumi. Aha, here it is. That is exactly what I remember them looking like, too. IBM M-Wave. One of those crystal sound chip things. I don't remember it working well. You know, it's been probably 20 years on the... Well, yeah, maybe not that long. 18, 17 years since I last used one of these. So uh, maybe it's a little better than I remember, but you know, it's one of these sound cards with an integrated modem. I remember that causing issues. Actually, you know, I remember that causing even more issues than the sound because uh, yeah, I tried to, or I had to set up uh, some networking and some dial-up networking stuff in the uh, school computer lab in high school and they all had these M-Wave cards and they were terrible. So I went raiding the closet for like dedicated uh, US robotics modems and then uh, sound blasters or sound blaster compatibles for sound. And that works so much better. Anyway, ah, here we go. Look at that. So this is a compatible ethernet card for the monorail. So yeah, you can see that it's made to be just kind of narrower this way, uh, because if you go much taller, there's just not really any room inside of the computer system for the monorail. And then there's this bracket. This is the other thing. Look at that. It's just like bent outwards this way. <laughs> I don't know if it's like, is that how they just, is that how they did it? <laughs> Curious if that was something that Monorail actually put in their computers, if it was just an upgrade installed by whoever owned that Monorail that that came out of. But anyway, and here we go. Look at this lovely CPU. AMD 5K86 P75 1996 heatsink and fan required. Pin's looking pretty nice. There's some bending going on across the top, but nothing terrible at all. Nothing missing. So, uh, yeah, all awesome stuff. Curious to see what is on this M-Wave disc. I, I was always using, like, generic drivers. Thank you very much. Okay, got one here from Catskull Electronics. Ooh, yes, I remember this. Oh, candy. <laughs> and a whole load of stickers. All the Catskull stickers. They're pretty cool designs. I like the metal one there. <laughs> That one's pretty cool, too. Got some high chews and the star of the event. Yeah, look at this thing. I like how it's encased in this plastic, like a shrink wrap almost. This is the Catskull Electronics YM2149 Synth V2. So yeah, that's a Yamaha 2149. And uh, we got MIDI and audio connections right there, both with three and a half mil jacks and of course that's what this is for you're probably familiar with these if you used any number of uh, smaller synthesizers yeah that just converts it to regular five pin din midi this is really cool it's such a tiny little synth 
and I guess it just uses, actually probably, yeah, USB for power, if I had to guess, right? So that's, that's just really cool. I, I didn't know what to uh, think of this. So when they got in touch about like, hey, here at Cat's Goal, we got some things that you might be interested in. This is the one that stood out to me the most. So uh, thank you, Cat's Goal, for sending this over. Curious to try that out. All right, got one here from the Netherlands from Daniel. All right, if all goes well, I should now have in my hands a small box with the infamous Cyrix 486DX2 GP50. Have a lot of fun. Yes, I will. I appreciate the ample packaging. And would you look at that. All right, there is a Cyrix 486DX2-ish <laughs> CPU. Cyrix made some fascinating processors back in the day. Yeah, I remember, I think he did mention that this had like some, you know, like weird little bits of corrosion or just something, little little green bits on there. Hmm. I've never used one of these, so uh, he offered to send it. I'm happy to test it out. Thank you very much. These are fascinating things. All right, got a big old yellow one here from Vinch. Got some books, CD, note. All right, it's nice stationery here. As the game we spoke of via electronic mail is enclosed. Maybe good for showing just how boring and terrible such a fun sounding game can even be. Thought I'd get a kick out of the PC repair disc. Love the blurbs. Your friend in time, Dr. Emmett L. Brown. Not Vanch. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, let's see what we got for the CD here. Master Technician. All right, that's amusing already. Diagnostics, interactive multimedia tutorial. That seems amazing. Advanced Pentium Flaw Detector and Fix. Yeah. Gonna see if your Pentium early ones have that math bug in them. Installation. Ah! Installation of a Real Magic MPEG card, CD ROM drive, memory modem, IDE, and floppy drives. I love how, like, literally every single one of them, other than maybe memory, is an obsolete thing. <laughs> Fun. And anyway, here we got. <laughs> this is awesome. Rise of the Triad Official Player's Guide. Official. Ah, oh, dude, that's awesome. That's not like uh, Prima or Brady games or anything. This is sort of before they were like the only two games in town. I mean, I think they were around too back then, but I love when uh, you get these kind of guides that are just from other companies or different kinds of authors. That's awesome. And here's this. Accolades Comics. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it sure does look cool. I love folio boxes. This is a neat one to have from Accolade. Commodore 64 and 128. 1987. Well, even if it isn't great, <laughs> it's an awesome package. So thank you very much. All right, got one here from Melker. Don't see a note. Oh, but I do see what it is. Well, wow, that is pretty special. That is a Microsoft Green Eye mouse. And from what I remember in the email, I think he said it wasn't used. Yeah, like it's still got the foam around the ball in there. It hasn't even been taken out. Okay, unscrew that. Check out this Microsoft logo. Old school Microsoft. I've always liked these, you know, the look of them. I've never actually had one. I don't know specifically which version it is or uh, either way. Looks like a really cool little cereal mouse. Thank you very much. Okie dokie, got one here from Ryan in Australia. Hey Clint, here is thing, enjoy thing, Mr. Boopy. All right, I will. Oh, look at this. So this is different. Atari ST Advantage Pack. I'm assuming this is a pack-in thing or something that was offered separately whenever you bought an Atari ST in New South Wales. Word processing, creativity, home accounting, music, strategy game, classic game, sports game, futuristic game. <laughs> what are these descriptions? Futuristic game? That's Robotron. Uh, anyway, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of things just packed in this vinyl package and kind of uh, like a binder. IBM style. I saw a lot more things on PC like this, like just in terms of the packaging. All right, so it's got spots for discs one through four. Where did disc five go? Just kind of hangs around, <laughs> I guess. 
Computing to many people is a mysterious subject, and the thought of working with a microcomputer system can be quite frightening. The inclusion of Jim, of course. This is really cool. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sending this over from Australia. Just a neat package a neat stuff. All right, got a couple down here. Looks like our records, or at least they're in record style packaging boxes. This one here is from Brady. All right, don't see any notes, but I do see, oh yeah. I believe this is a bootleg. I mean, it's gotta be, right? Day of the Tentacle, the soundtrack. <laughs> DNB Records, DNB number 01. Yep, that is not legit. I'm rather fond of these types of, uh, yeah, dubious releases. Oh, it's got a teen rating on there. So, Definitive Sound Blaster version. Ooh, okay. I'm not sure I'd call that definitive, uh, but that's awesome to have a Sound Blaster soundtrack on there. Digitally mastered for the first time on vinyl. Yeah, because uh, it's not official. Oh, now that is an awesome insert in there. Check that out. <laughs> Very cool. So there is the track listing. That's really neat. And of course, oh, I mean, of course they're in green and purple, right? So there is side C and D in solid green with a purple inner part. And side A and B with purple with a green inner. Uh, yeah. Matching the tentacle colors, I mean, that's what you gotta be. If they ever did an official release of the tentacle soundtrack, I anticipate they'd do something similar or perhaps a... Uh, spattered swirly pattern of the same you just got to do purple and green right so yeah thank you very much for this fantastic addition to my uh, bootleg video game vinyl collection <laughs> I do have a number of these and this other one which appears to be a record is from ivan in slovakia oh yeah okay yeah i remember him telling me about this too so this right here is a debut album amphysian cyprus and yeah, I was definitely interested in me. Look at the recommended. If you like Yes, Genesis, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, or King Crimson, uh, Yes to all of the above. I like how it's labeled or numbered 486 out of 250. That's got to be uh, something LGR related, a special LGR edition. Oh, yeah. Nice 140 gram vinyl. Look at that. Curious to give this a listen because, uh, yeah, I'm absolutely into Prague. Any of the music of that era that those bands were most popular so this seems awesome dude yes new music to listen to while editing all of this footage down thank you very much oh yeah so this is a uh, an interesting one <laughs> my mail agent he was like uh yeah this one is in a plastic bag it arrived with like a note on it saying that it, something happened to it or there was something suspicious about it and they had to put it in a plastic bag it was like the last time I seen something in a bag like this was during the anthrax scare of 2001. So, uh, hopefully it's nothing. Anyway, this one's from Jacob. Yeah. Just computer games, man. All right. So, first one up here. A little bit newer, smaller box. Settlers. Rise of an Empire. Never played that or this. Empire Earth 3. Actually, I've played the first two, of course, but never the third one. Got some SSI, AD&D, Eye &E, of the Beholder 2, Legend of Dark Moon. A rather worn box. Actually, I don't think I have this one at all, do I? Looking at my shelf over there. Nope, I don't have it. What I do have is the first one, which, yeah, much, much smaller box. And lastly is the one that sort of intrigued me the most. <laughs> this is the infamous Eternum by Capstone. I do recommend the video by Ross Scott over on his Game Dungeon series and his YouTube channel. This is quite <laughs> the game. Uh, it's interesting in a way that is... Uh, I mean, it calls itself a virtual adventure vacation. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, thank you very much for all these. Don't know why the post office deemed it necessary to wrap everything up in a plastic bag, but uh, there it is. Thank you. Oh, hey, this came in as well in the mailbox. It was sort of stuffed in between some other packages over there. I almost missed it. Yeah, just a postcard from uh, Chu Hai Labs, a Happy New Year card. And yeah, Kenzie got in touch and uh, she works with them now. It's just an awesome postcard. So thank you very much to Kinsey and GI Labs. Looking forward to seeing what y'all make. Mm, it's getting a bit rainy out there. Enjoy the ambience. So yeah, this one here is from Masterworks Software. 
All right, so here, look at this. Ooh, quite the letter. So yeah, this is from Jay Wheeler and Joshua Kalin, who are the co-developers of the game Flux. I did a video about getting a physical copy of it over on my Blurbs channel. I believe it was on there. Uh, yeah, it had to have been. <laughs> anyway, uh, it was a rather underwhelming thing. Yeah, they said, despite my best efforts to portray their beloved 20-year-old game in a positive light, the backup CD that purchased turned out to be a rather underwhelming experience. Yeah, it was just one of those generic, like, backup CDRs that you could buy a physical copy of when you registered on online, and that's all they sent. But apparently, there were actual production CD-ROMs. Uh, anyway, yeah, I also had a, a couple of questions I was asking about, like, Real Arcade, because that was how I discovered the game back in the day, and it turns out that was indeed the dominant source of income for Flux. I was thinking it was, because that's the main place I saw it promoted, and, uh, yeah, they also sold a number themselves. Some fascinating stuff about just one of my favorite puzzle games from back then. I just, I really like these type of same games, and this game, Flux, is the entire reason why. The graphics, the music, the visual effects, and just the overall presentation and simplicity of the gameplay mixed with enough strategy and some of the puzzles. Really fun. Oh my word. What in the world? I thought they were going to send one, maybe two. Well, that is um, a rather ridiculous collection of the deluxe version of Flux CD-ROM. Look at that. That is a, a thousand times better than the cheap backup copy that I got when I registered it online. Of course, I gotta open up one of them. That's wonderful. Look at that, a proper CD and everything. Excitement. So yeah, um, thank you very much guys for sending this in. I, I don't know what to do with these. I will uh, think up something really cool. 15 copies. Well, 16, including mine, but I'm keeping one. So there's 15 copies available that I'm going to do something with. Either a giveaway or like a charity auction or something. Either way, thank you very much. Curious to see exactly what's on the Deluxe Edition CD as well. Got one here from Mitchell in New Zealand. Traveled to a land of far over the sea for a luxury getaway is the enclosed Japanese Windows 95 software, I promised. And a few bonus items in one interesting floppy disk in quotes. <laughs> Potentially useless. Awesome! Well, apparently LGR inspired him to get off his backside and get back into YouTube creation after a 12-year hiatus. All right, well, fantastic. Uh, keep it up. That's a long time to be away from YouTube, so uh, hopefully it is invigorating getting back to it. A whole bunch of things in here. Oh, three and a half inch floppy disk cleaner in a floppy jewel case. What's a cleaner about it? It's just, uh, I was expecting like a cloth or something inside. Huh. Interesting. How to use set up MS-DOS. <laughs> okay. Set cleaning disk in the drive clean. Current existing drive is to be changed to the drive set in cleaning disk. Well, uh, that's, that's very helpful. Um, not at all. What, what is this? It's like a, pr it's a program. I mean, this is data. What is it cleaning? Is it more like an alignment disk? Like something to help? I don't know. Just as an example, this is more what I was expecting. You, know, you normally have like a cloth in there. You put like alcohol or some cleaning fluid on there. But yeah, it's not that. And here we go. I think this is what uh, initially got in touch about is Windows 95 releases, so it's just a regular upgrade edition, but look at that. It's Windows 95, I've got some, some Japanese versions here, which is great because I've actually been running into needing to reinstall uh, different localized versions of Windows 95 and 98 on different Japanese computers that I have, and I've been relying on just like ISOs, so nice to have some actual disks, very much so. So yeah, thanks for all of these, and for this confusing floppy. <laughs> I still got to figure out what it does. All right, I do not see a name on this one, so let's open it up. What the heck is this? <laughs> 
Imagine there's something else inside here. That seems like uh, one of those <laughs> like gag gift type of packages. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's good. Oh my, let's see what we got here. Oof. Club O Fun. Oh, limited run games. All right. Well, awesome. It's like a newsletter. Not a poster. A whole bunch of uh, limited runs physical releases. I have a number of these myself. I pretty much get all of their PC ones if I can. And got a letter here from Escape Velocity Studios. Here's a special donation for your collection. Hope you get a chance to review them on my channel. It's a part-time retro gaming tech content creator that could use some support, so if you feel the need, please give them a shout. Okay, well, shout out to Escape Velocity Studios. Thank you very much for the things. So we got X-Wing and TIE Fighter. Limited run big box releases. <laughs> Did not have these. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Because I've got all the originals just up there, actually, on the, uh, the LucasArts and Lucasfilm Games shelf. That's really cool. I will absolutely show these whenever I get around to covering the games themselves, like the originals. I've covered X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, but that's a different thing compared to the original uh, TIE Fighter and X-Wing games. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Dan, from Escape Velocity Studios. This is a minor thing, but all these collectible card things that Limited Run does, I like them, it's cool, but like I wish they'd just release a thing to hold them all in because I have so many of them now. Hey, never mind, forget what I said. They, they do have that. There it is. Okay, I got one here from Jorgen. Okay, I don't see a note, but here's the thing. It's the Buddy, the B210A with 50 foot cable. Turn one PC into two. This was mighty intriguing to me. I'd never heard of this. It's like a, a reverse KVM almost, kind of. You're not, you're not splitting uh, your peripherals into multiple computers. You're taking one computer and splitting it into multiple peripherals. So there's a PCI card, this little breakout box for connecting a second monitor, keyboard, and mouse. This junction box, and then you got some software. Congrats, you now have two PCs up to 50 feet away. Don't know how exactly this works. But I'm mighty intrigued to try it out. So thank you for sending this in. Okay, got one here from Anthony. All right, here is the Panasonic calculator, as promised. Fantastic. And threw in a few extra goodies as well. And if anybody still does a shout out thing, uh, sure, why not? I do live stream on Twitch uh, and YouTube. So, AP Grenis on both Twitch and YouTube. Well, let's see what this is first, because I didn't know he was sending this. A video 338 PCI 128 twin. This is a G4 6200. Okay. Used to have one of these. I exactly like this one because this one has two outputs on the back. Twin view applications for work and play. So I can connect a second monitor. That's nice. Whoop. There's some RAM in here too. 768 megs, it looks like, of PC133. That's useful. Just curious to see if the actual card is indeed in here. And it seems to be. Oh yeah, that looks familiar. That's, that's really cool though. It's got two VGA outputs. That's pretty neat. Normally you see like VGA and S video or VGA and DVI or something. And this delightful Panasonic calculator. Look at this logo. Panasonic electronic calculator. <laughs> what are these? This is not part of the calculator. Uh, this is like Dr. Pepper earbuds? Well, that's a thing. I have to plug these into my uh, cheeseburger radio. So let's see here. Oh, oh, oh. look at it. Is that just not one of the most appealing things you've ever seen? It's got that 2001 A Space Odyssey vibe, that like 70s kind of, uh, yeah, almost Star Wars-y aesthetic as well. <laughs> it's just awesome, I think. Looks like it'll have a really cool LED display as well. And it's providing that I can get it working because, um, yeah, it is rechargeable, so who knows what kind of weird little batteries in there. Hope I can get it working though, because this is one of the coolest calculators I've ever seen. I'd never seen this before until I sent the email about it. Uh, so thank you very, very much for all these. These are really cool goodies. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm, got one here from Andrew. 
Oh man, hey there. Thanks for all you do. Thank you for doing all you've done. Like sending this wonderful, wonderful thing. I've been hoping to grab one of these for a long time to cover an LGR. Timex data link. Dude, look at that smartwatch of a sort that synchronizes by looking at your monitor. Yeah, it like flashes signals and whatnot to, uh, <laughs> to, to do your things like anniversaries and appointments and calendar, phone number, to-do list. Look at the watch itself real quick, and it does seem to be... That is phenomenal. Look at the little sensor there. I'm assuming it's... Oh, I don't know what... I can't assume anything. <laughs> I don't know how exactly it functions. I'm going to do a good bit of research on this to figure out how it works. I'm going to do some demonstrations in a video. Potentially oddware. I don't know. It's kind of oddware. Definitely an LGR thing. So thank you very much, Andrew, for sending this over. I was really excited to get this email. I'm like, ah, finally somebody that has one. I, I, you know, I've seen them on eBay and whatnot, but... Uh, a very generous donation. I appreciate it highly. Expect to see this in LGR in the future. All right. This does not have a name. Let's just open it up. What? Saltwater taffy. I don't know if it's actually what's in here, but it probably is. It looks like it's still sealed up. Shriver's saltwater taffy. I've never had saltwater taffy. As the diamond video card we discussed, and also a quick reference guide for Windows XP, thanks to the years of witty commentary and abundant application of alliteration alliteratively. Ah yes, absolutely awesome as always. And I will enjoy the saltwater taffy from South Jersey. Didn't know what I would like, so just grabbed a generic variety box. I've never had it at all, so uh, a variety box is a good idea. Oh hey, what's this? Elfbowl.exe, elf bowling? On a floppy disk. Wonderful. All right. Oh, this is cool. What is this? This is from some uh, Nevada Learning Series Incorporated. I was going to say, this looks like one of those things that would come with like a, uh, like a teacher's guide or a curriculum or just to help you learn things like one of those learning systems. And this, ooh, Diamond Speed Star 64, affordable 64-bit graphics accelerator, ISA version. Two megs. Wow. So many megs. This is going to be a really fun little car to try out. Yeah, looks like a Windows accelerator for sure. Although it mentions the gaming performance as well. Uh, Cirrus Logic GD5434. That's not a terrible chipset from what I've read. Don't know if I've ever used that one exactly. It feels like I have. It feels like I was using something that had that same basic Cirrus Logic chip in it. Whoa. Man, I just don't know what to expect. What is all this? All these confections. Oof. All right, straight off, the smell is amazing. <laughs> Where do I start? What are all the colors? What does it do? Why is it called saltwater taffy? Yeah, it actually started in Atlantic City in the early 1890s. I've been watching through Boardwalk Empire recently, and this is kind of trippy. Anyway, a man by the name of Bradley sold taffy on the boardwalk. High tide ruined some of it and he was angry. He offered it sarcastically as saltwater taffy. There's no salt in saltwater taffy? I feel betrayed. And I've never even had it. All right, let me just pick one. Let me pick one. Dude. So it's just a starburst, like without the starburst shape, because that's a straight up starburst orange flavor and kind of the same texture. I genuinely had no idea. <laughs> it's pretty good. Mm. Heck yeah, dude. Uh, fantastic set of goodies. Thank you very much. I'm gonna get one here from Billy. All right. Single board computer. Ooh. Peak 630C with a Pentium 3. Still reports as a Pentium 2 instead of a 3, but doesn't appear to cause any problems. Hey, well, all right. As long as it works. Goodbye, me. Yeah. Somebody's dongle protector. Oh, yeah. Handy little breakout deal right here. That is a heck of a ferrite thing around that. Oh, dude. <laughs> Look at this thing. Oh, that's awesome. Beastly card. 
I mean, that's the whole computer, not just a card. Yeah, definitely a Pentium 3. Look at that thing. Ethernet, VGA, serial, PS2, probably just the keyboard. The fact that it has SCSI on board is really, really cool. I see an Adaptat controller there for that. Yeah. Oh, that's a, such a nice little thing. No, it's not little at all. It's a thing, though. Well, thank you very much for this. Absolutely going to try this out in one of my back planes. Uh, this looks wildly capable. I really like the idea of being able to use these kind of boards and then just swap them out for like a 46 one and then this one and the same kind of the same kind of setup and everything same back plane and there goes that rain again okay got one here from steven <laughs> well, there's other things in here too but this was cracking me up because i think i got one of these in the last one <laughs> it's another mouse burger oh isn't this great? <laughs> it's got two mouse burgers. It's funny, somebody was just posting a picture that they also found one on the LGR subreddit not long ago. <laughs> oh man, at this point, I could almost make an entire like burger based computer setup. <laughs> How many times has that been said? But I'm getting there, you know, with enough burger peripherals and accessories. I got burger headphones. I got. I got a burger, a couple burger mice, I got, I got a burger mouse pad, I got a burger uh, AM FM radio. I need like a burger keyboard and a burger monitor or like something to put on a monitor that looks like burgers. All right, what else? Ooh, World Tour Golf. Not a game I've ever played. That's for the Commodore 64 and 128. That's probably why. Uh, I love old computer golf games though. Amusingly, it does say it's for the PC, but that's not. That's just some used sticker. Commodore 64 and 128. Don't know if there was a PC version, but... <laughs> just the disc. It doesn't look like the documentation is still in here. It would have also been in that sleeve, but... Heck yeah, dude. Love old golf games. Here's a classic. Look at that. Oh, it's a shame it got all smashed, but... I'll try to put it back into shape. This is the Ice Pick. And there's the cartridge and the software. Dude, that's really cool. Look at that. Wow, that rain is picking up. Ice Pick, say Ice Pick, is an extraordinary hardware and software combination that's capable of copying virtually all memory resonant software, regardless of the original protection scheme or storage medium. Yeah. When I first got my Commodore 64 14 years ago or whatever it was, just getting into collecting the things, I had a number of discs that said Ice Pick something, something, something. And they either needed the cartridge or they just weren't working. Whatever. Anyway, this is the package. Okay, Rain, just do your thing. So there's the uh, software that goes with it and, like, something else. Maybe a backup. Oh, look, it's even got all the original stuff in here. Warranty, send-off card. Got some ads for their other products like star dos <laughs> you know, the order form i'm going to cover up the personally identifying information on the other side but yeah this is the original credit card receipt carbon copy well it's not really is it carbon yeah it looks like carbon copy look at that you put it in the thing and then you, you put it over the thing and yeah look at that 65 dollars three dollars shipping phone order and yeah, I can see on the other side where it had the customer's visa information, March 1986. And I guess credit card numbers have changed in their length because that looks slightly different. So yeah, they ordered this over the phone. This is wonderful. Yeah, there's no UPC or anything. Like, was this even sold in stores? I don't know. I've never seen a physical, like, original copy of Ice Pick, much less the cartridge that goes with it. I really hope it still works. The cartridge probably does, right? And if nothing else, I can always make a, a probably, a copy of this and, 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 yeah. I don't know, man. I've never actually used it because I didn't have the cartridge until now. So, uh, wonderful. <laughs> Copies all memory resident software. Loads many times faster than originals. Invisible to software. Cannot be defeated. Eliminates drive knock. There's antique protection schemes. <laughs> Gets rid of those. Automatically cracks protected programs. Like, isn't this the coolest? 
And then we got these as well, and these fantastic big old clamshell things. Bigger than VHS for sure. Uh, yeah, Adventures in Narnia. We got Narnia and Dawn Treader. A Lifeware interface game. And this one says a word Lifeware interface game. <laughs> Apple and Commodore versions in here. Really, really cool packaging, man. Combining the charm of a fantasy story with the excitement of a computer game is software your whole family can enjoy. All right. This one says Lifeware. This one says Word Lifeware. But it looks like they're... Maybe they just rebranded. Uh, games encourage you to interact with each other, not just with a television screen. Enjoy the dynamics of a program computer game as well as the human interaction of traditional gameplay using dice and cards. Dude. Nah. Look at this. It's got the book. It's got cards. It's got a die in there. Six-sided. Just numbers instead of pits or dots or whatever. Dude. So, uh, Apple version. This is a flippy disk. It is. Commodore 64 on the other side. Lots of rain outside. Good grief. That's coming down hard now. Man, this is neat. Neat, neat, neat. Look at that. I really enjoyed those books as a kid. Don't know how well they hold up as an adult, to be honest. I'm sure I might have uh, some questions. But anyway, oh, that's just that's just excellent. Wow. I like the safety seal that was probably on the outside holding it together, but it's still in there. They kept it. <laughs> oh, fantastic things. And the rain just disappears. Alrighty. You're in a box here from Bradley. Ah, Bradley and Tay. You're longtime viewers of LGR. Thanks for all the years of cool content. You're very welcome. And I hope you enjoy checking out this game pack. Fellow North Carolinians. Okay. Ah, yes. Microprose Entertainment Pack Volume 1. Tandy exclusive. Dr. Floyd mouse pad inside. I guess that's Dr. Floyd. The talking computer companion. <laughs> Yeah, something sold at Radio Shack, or at least this version of it was with the mouse pad. I'm assuming that uh, Microprose also sold it. Not at Radio Shack, but I don't know. I'd never heard of this, haven't looked into it. I uh, will now. Kai. It's got Kai in here. I've mentioned that before in some video about Windows 3.1 things. Time to escape with Dr. Floyd's stretch. Stretch. <laughs> Time to escape with Dr. Floyd's stretch. Stress. Smashing. Why is that hard to say? Stretch smash. Stretch smashing desktop toys for. That's embarrassing. Moving on. Oh, dude, I was hoping the mouse pad would still be in there. Look at that. Got some discs. Uh, oh, that's appropriate. Microsoft Entertainment Pack as well in here. But yeah, there it is. Dr. Floyd's Desktop Toys Entertainment Pack Volume 1. Was there ever a Volume 2? I don't know. And all the original thingies. Microprose hint line. Quick start. License. No manual. Probably doesn't need one. And of course the Microprose catalog. Ah, looks like Dr. Floyd's was $40. Thank you all very much. I'm happy to give Dr. Floyd a new home. I'll have to talk to him at some point. Okay, got one here from Connor in Canada. Ooh, look at that. I remember him telling me about this. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Collector's Edition in a tin case. Number 1219 out of 3000. Is this like a collection? I don't know, but there's a, there's a lot of CDs. Rainbow Six Lockdown, Rainbow Six Athena Sword, Raven Shield, of course, Eagle Watch, and then original Rainbow Six French and English versions. Yeah, it's like all the expansions and like this, some of the sequels. A whole bunch of goodies. <laughs> Got the Rainbow Six camo belt with a, with a belt clip on there. It's actually a nice little cloth belt. T-shirt with logo and things. Oh, it's a long sleeve. Ghost Recon 3. Got the Ghost Recon dude. Just says Rainbow Six on there. And we got a swag bag. We got a little zipper area in there too. Ooh, 
additional pouches. How tactical. Well, this right here is darned nifty. I didn't realize it'd have that many games in there. I thought it was just straight up Rainbow Six, the original. Either way, neat packaging. It's too bad those aren't actual bullet holes, but this is not running with scissors. So I guess Ubisoft drew the line there. Thank you very much for sending this in. All right, got one here from Jamie. Letter time, enclosed as promised, is the box copy of Windows 1. Also noticed in the last unboxing, you received an original Sound Blaster. Don't recall you having a boxed version, so I, what, what? Figured it'd include one of those as well? This Sound Blaster holds a soft place in my heart as it's one of my most memorable Christmas gifts as a kid. Well, thank you very kindly for sending it in then. Good grief. Well, this is special, Jamie, in multiple ways. It's like pristine. I was not expecting that. Goodness. I've never had one of these in box. <laughs> uh, the fact that it was one of your Christmas gifts though, man, like I, if you ever want it back, just let me know. Cause I, I know how it can be giving these things away and then regretting it later. Either way though, I will be very happy to have this in the collection, display it for YouTube to see and do a review on it. I've been wanting to get a box for the original Sound Blaster to, to do a retrospective on it. It does seem to be a slightly later revision just because it's got the Windows sticker that's been added to it. So that's a question, like which version is it? Because they use the same box for a while. Oh man, well that is pristine. <laughs> got all the discs, got a, an update here. Yeah, so it's mentioning the Sound Blaster Pro and also the MCV. So this is definitely around 1991. 92 revision. Yeah, the discs say 91. Aha! Uh -huh. That looks like a Sound Blaster 2.0. Ah, 1350B Rev 4. This needs a little cleaning up, but it will be fantastic once it is clean. These are awesome cards. Uh, the ones where you can add the GAL chip and CMS right there to get uh, Game Blaster support. Wonderful, wonderful card and will absolutely be used. And this, again, the packaging and everything else, fantastic shape. Ah, and then of course, copy of Windows, just straight up Windows. So that is an older edition than the one I received not too long ago as well. In fact, here's that other one. And you can see uh, <laughs> they really beefed up the packaging between these versions of Windows. Like, yeah, they're both Windows 1. In fact, they have the exact same screenshots and pretty much the same kind of marketing copy on the back. So this big one is 1.04. I don't see a Microsoft version sticker on here. You know, because it's got like the old Microsoft logo. You can see they changed it between these two. Oh, goodness. Look at all the, wah, all the Microsoft, all of the windows. Ah, there's a whole thing. Starting and quitting windows with keys. Among other things. Oh, it's a quick reference card. That's not a card, man. That's like a little book. Oh, it's a big old fold-out. Quick reference card. Macro library. Windows Paint. There's a manual for paint. Beautiful. Uh, Windows, oh, at 1.03. Wow. So there's the tiniest revision between them, but... Oh, man, between 1.03 and 04, they're like, all right, we're, we're going to get serious now. You know, user's Guide for Windows itself. Windows Write. Like that, that's a lot of documentation just for Write, but hey, if you've never used a writing program word processor kind of thing before. Ah, look at that. Microsoft, the high performance software. <laughs> Isn't that great? 1986. So there are older versions. But honestly, even just between these two, uh, it'll go a long way into demonstrating what the original Windows upgrade experience, ins installation, whole, whole living with early Windows kind of uh, video that I have planned in my head. So thank you very much. Okay, I got one here from John. Okay, well, um, cool. I don't know what to say. I guess I have a sealed one and a not sealed one now. Oh yeah, well, okay, so there, the sticker is just on the plastic. So that makes sense why it wasn't maybe on the other version of Windows down there. Is this 1.04 as well? 
Look, look at this packaging. Microsoft. What is this? Yeah, totally different selection of things in terms of the paperwork. Yeah, the manuals are... Look at what they, they put it all into here. Look at that. Okay. Well, I'm assuming this is uh, 1.04 as well, but... Yeah, I mean, that's what that means, right? Okay. We go from not having any versions of Windows 1 to multiple. <laughs> Thank you very much, John. This is awesome. Okay. That one's pretty heavy. And I don't know who it's from. Note. Okay. Looks like it's from Jim. Wait until after the holidays to drop this in the mail. Sorry for the delay. No problem at all. Here it is in April. <laughs> I disassembled the binders and wrapped the pages. Awesome. Uh, among the last of the artifacts from his childhood is Computer Nerd. Uh, yeah, yeah, Volkswriter. Yeah, I remember mentioning this now. It was the first proper word processor for the IBM PC and predated WordStar by a whole six weeks. Amazing. Used extensively in junior high until more fully featured programs started to emerge. Ah, thank you very much. Let's see what we got in here. We got some... Look at this. All these binders. Oh. Isn't that a sight to behold? Ah, IBM Classics in the vinyl packaging. Uh, Typing Tutor in there. Kind of salmon-y colored thing almost. <laughs> and Decathlon. Really early PC game. Oh, it doesn't, doesn't seem to have the disc. But hey, the packaging itself is pretty darn cool. I don't have this. And Typing Tutor. Yeah, disc is in there. <laughs> oh, IBM's boring packaging. It's wonderful. So yeah, Volk's a writer. This is one I was really, really interested in. I really enjoy older word processors and any kind of just classic productivity software that has been all but forgotten. Ah. Nice. Look at that disc. Awesome. 128K. 1982. That is some classy old IBM PC software. There were no PC compatibles. <laughs> it's just straight up for the IBM PC. Yeah, and all the others have the pages wrapped up like that, so I'll have to take them out. But yeah, I got uh, Word Proof. Guide to Operations for the IBM 5150. Heck yes. Uh, basic and Basic 3.0. And then, this is also really exciting to me. DOS 1.1. Doesn't appear to have any disks, but... Again, the documentation, just the whole <laughs> package, is great. Because I can get the discs easier than I can, or, you know, make the discs easier than I can the packaging. And, I mean, just look at this. What an amazing selection of software. I set this up on uh, one of my IBM 5150s. Anyway, thank you for these. Just a gorgeous thing to put on a shelf and try out on old PCs when I need that early 80s experience. Authentically. Okay, go from Vox Writer to Vox Inc. <laughs> it's a package, rather long one, from Art. And multiple things in here. We don't see any notes, so let's just take a look at the things. We got some Creative Labs Sound Blaster speakers, the SBS 30s. That design is just the most wonderfully early mid 90s thing. <laughs> I've always liked the way they looked, but I've never had any. So uh, that's great. Put those to use in a Sound Blaster system. And then this was mighty interesting as well. And he told me about this. I was like, yep, definitely interested. Like how the uh, still has Electronics Boutique $259 price tag in there. Anyway, Foam Blaster, the all-in-one communication center. So it's a Sound Blaster, but it's got a modem. And I didn't know that that was a thing, you know. I've seen plenty of other sound cards that have modems built in. I mean, we saw the M-Wave earlier, but it's a sound blaster with a modem. 14400 BPS. 
Music on hold. Ooh, you can have music play. Yeah, I just want to see what it looks like real quick. Lots of things, man. Lots of... Th oh, goodness. Is this necessary? It's got one of them absolute classic microphones. Look at the gooseneck. <laughs> and it's got creative branding on it. It's not just completely generic, so that's a plus. Wow. So it's a Viber 16 chip. Look at this thing. It's so long. Long. It's like an R32. But uh, no, no, I mean, that's very much what it looks like. CT3110. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming it's pretty bog standard in terms of like Sound Blaster 16 capabilities. Yeah, it's just like all the extra modem stuff. So there's like a whole Rockwell chipset going on here. All the things over here for telephony goodness. That's so strange seeing a Sound Blaster 16 normal kind of stuff and then RJ11 right there. <laughs> all this stuff. Up to 9,000 passcode protected mailboxes, pager notification, hold music from MIDI. From MIDI. <laughs> I gotta try this. Oh man, thank you very much for these. There's even an AOL disc version 2.0. Had this exact package at one point. It's still sealed. Ooh, ooh, that disc brings back such memories. And they're getting bigger. And the rain is picking up again. Let's see, who is this from? Ah, it's from Kaywin in Sweden. Here comes the AdLib box and Logitech bus mouse. Excellent! And threw something rare in there just to fill it out a bit. I'm sure you'd have a hard time finding it on eBay or otherwise. <laughs> oh, that's a familiar sight. My entire room is full of boxes right now, and I can't even see the floor. All right. <laughs> this is a familiar sight from the mid-2000s. A Dazzle Digital Video Creator 80. Classic little capture devices for composite as a video. And here is the Logitech bus mouse, as expected. Didn't have this one. I like how it says right-hand mouse. Because I... Guess you had to specify it. I mean, their other one was kind of ambidextrous. The other, like, older, kind of boxier Logitech Mouse Man. Oh, actually, I don't even know if it was a Mouse Man, come to think of it. I think it was just called the Logitech Bus Mouse. I suppose this is... What in the world? Well, this is a Microsoft IntelliMouse, but... It's transparent. The packaging looks completely normal. In fact, I have another IntelliMouse that looks just like that, but what is this mouse? Clear does specify it. Origin Ireland. And it ended up in Sweden. And now it's in the US. You weren't kidding about this being a weird rarity, oddity kind of thing. I have never seen this before. If anybody knows the story behind it, like anything really about it, let me know. This is a fascinating find, clearly. Looking up the parts numbers does indeed bring up a Swedish retailer stocking this at one point back in the late 90s, early 2000s. And but other than that, that's about it. And the rest is just speculation from folks being like, uh, hey, maybe was this made for prisons or something being that it's clear? And I can't find any evidence of that. In fact, I looked up a whole bunch of prison computer lab photos and such, and not a single one of them had a clear mouse on the desk. And as far as I know, like all those clear technology products in prisons were made for like uh, prisoners to directly use on their own, not like the stuff that's in a lab. I mean, the computers aren't transparent. The monitors weren't transparent. Nothing was. It just looked like all like normal computers. <laughs> so anyway, still don't know what this is about, but it's absolutely fascinating, so thank you. And then finally, we got the centerpiece item here. <laughs> this I had never seen before, not this packaging anyway. This is an AdLib personal computer music system, a classic sound card, the OPL2, but it's in this big old wide box. It appears to be like the same height as the regular packaging for the AdLib, but it's twice the width. Uh, and, and yeah, I just, I didn't know why. I'd never seen this before. Uh, the card is not in here, unfortunately, but I think everything else is. It seems like everything contained in here is pretty much the same as you'd get on the regular package in 1987-88. Just as a point of comparison, I have one of those as well. This is the normal package, and this is the one I've seen in every photo 
of, uh, well, just about uh, all the original AdLib releases was this. And of course there were later ones, but, um, yeah, uh, this, this is what I was familiar with. And then he offered this. So let's just, uh, see what is in the box. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, look at that. It's like exactly the same size. So they just put it in a different sleeve, which means there's another box in here too. Oh, okay. So this is a bundle with their pop tunes program here. Yeah. It's just a TSR for letting you play music within DOS memory resident program that lets you play your favorite songs while working on other applications. Oh, I hope the disc is in here. Hey, there we go. Look at that. So we got a visual composer as well as in here and pop tunes version 1.5. Awesome. 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 Ooh, it's got new features, additional waveforms, bank files, reduced memory requirements. Wonderful. I really like the embossed ad lib logo there. Look at that. Classy. Ad lib documentation, composition projects one and two. So that's cool. I only had number one before. The jukebox, a couple of different versions of it 1.5 and 1.51. Composition project number two. But I don't see any of the documentation or discs or really anything related to just the uh, ad lib card on its own. Assuming that was uh, lost at some point over time, because it certainly came with it. No, that's fine. I do have an original ad lib card. It doesn't quite match this one in terms of being earlier, but uh, whatever. Thank you very much for this much less common package. All right, the next two are rather large. All right, this massive one is from Aaron. Beer. Nice idea individually wrapping them. All right. Hi, Clint. Here is the Summer Sketch 3. It was owned by my wife's grandfather, Dick Bostrom. Hopefully it works. Yeah. Also included some local Minnesota beers. Hope they didn't explode on the way. Doesn't look like it. They seem to have done a nice job. They were all individually wrapped and bubble wrapped and bagged. So what we got in here? BSB brews like the BBC looking logo there. The Great Black Stack Bake Off. Ha ha. Indeed. Blackberry Fringe Toast. Okay. And these others. <laughs> this beefy one. Batteries not included. Okay. Imperial Coffee Cake Stout. That is a strong one. Barrel Theory Beer Company, St. Paul, Minnesota. This one is Falling Knife. <laughs> Verbal tip hazy IPA with mosaic and citra hops. Falling knife brewing, Minneapolis. Another huge boy here in a junkyard brewing out of Moorhead. The art of selection IPA. Hop at six pounds per barrel with mosaic citra sabro. Hmm. Strata, Eldorado, and Enigma. Well, okay. All right. And a fruity one. Blood orange miraculum fruited IPA. From Prize Brewing. Hmm. And last but not least, we got some kind of vanilla limited release. Fad Vanilla New England Devil IPA by Omni Brewing. Wow, that is quite the selection of things here. <laughs> Accidentally bumped this one and it slightly sprung a leak. Um, so I'm assuming they were rather uh, ready to burst. Thankfully, they didn't burst inside of the box. All right, now as for the main contents, I got this serial looking device here. <laughs> a little unusual looking. Yeah, this is um, something that plugs into the summer sketch. Got some cables and adapters and things. Look at that. Yeah. And as for the device itself, it is in this box. Yeah, you can kind of see what it's supposed to be though. Big old graphics tablet for IBM compatibles and DOS and Windows, Mac compatible apparently as well. It's a lot of, a lot of things in here. What is this? Okay, cap and transistor tester. And a power supply, Sino American. And that right there is the device itself. 
Wow, just a big old beige gray graphics tablet from back in the day. You got the I.O. back here for plugging in things, the stylus, power. Yeah, it's just all big and wide, so here we go. Here is an overall shot at it, and look at that. It's pretty large. It's like about maybe 16, 18 inches square. I've never used one of these. I don't know how similar it is to like older Wacom tablets or other various graphics tablets that I've used for old computers, but I am intrigued to find out. There's one more thing. All right. Sound Craftsman Instructional Test Record Audio Frequency Equalizer Test. <laughs> On vinyl, that is really neat. And no doubt quite useful for a number of different things. You can see that's the hardware I was meant to work with, I suppose. Now in a few minutes you can transform the acoustical peaks and valleys of your listening area into an acoustically flat sound reproduction studio. <laughs> All right. And the reference tones on this record are bands of one-third octave pink noise. Indeed. Okay, yeah, so this is all <laughs> really cool stuff. A lot of large, flat things and beer. Hopefully that's not flat, too. Thank you very much. Okay, got one more, and it is the largest one so far here today, so I'm going to open it off camera and bring it over to the table. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay, well, very clearly this is a Lee and Lee PC case with an aquarium. <laughs> okay. Um, and some other things. Uh, yeah, let's just open the enclosed note. Top one, dear LGR. Hi, my name is Claire and I'm 12 years old. Hi, Claire. My mom and I have been watching your channel for a long time now. We find it quite interesting. Two of my favorite videos are Detective Barbie and the Mystery of the Carnival Caper and Christina Aguilera, Follow Your Dreams for Windows 98. They're hilarious. <laughs> Those were fun. Uh, anyway, my mom had this computer from a while back and would like to donate it to you. We hope you enjoy. Oh, I will. Look at this ridiculous thing. Uh, so thank you, Claire. And Amber says, just pour water in the top hole of the side panel and you're good to go. Not much more to it than that. Email with any questions. Enjoy. Thank you very much, Amber. Uh, this is just so ludicrous. Had no idea it ever was made. I really enjoy Lee and Lee cases. It's a very similar style to this, actually, that uh, my Megalumina Monster has, which is also a Lee and Lee case. And uh, over here, it looks like we've got just the regular side panel. So... There's that, and then the tank of sorts goes onto the side there. I, I don't know how exactly this works, but I am so intrigued to find out. Not today. I'm not going to open it up here. This absolutely deserves a video of its own. And it's got multicolored LEDs. So we got RGB aquarium on the side of your computer case. <laughs> I just want to know, um, how did you originally come into this? Did you just like see it in a store and be like, you know what, I need that. Was it specially ordered? Oh man, I hope it was special ordered. That would be so funny. So here we have some installation guides for the aquarium part. Oh my word. Yeah. And you're just standard stuff that would go to the regular Lee and Lee case. Which, yeah, that's almost exactly the same as my other one. Uh, just a slightly different front design. These cases are wonderful. <laughs> and also included were uh, a couple of things in here. Just a uh, random Memorex keyboard, a multimedia thing, and a, a rather appropriate little PS2 serial mouse. Look at that. It's got a liquid little, what is that, a little frog guy or something? I don't know. A little alien looking frog thing. From Kids Unlimited, the Aqua Mouse. It's, it's extremely appropriate for a case with an aquarium on the side. I do have another one of these that has a popsicle stick inside of there. It looks it's exactly the same, just a different color scheme. There's a popsicle instead of whatever that little guy is. Um, thank you so much for this. <laughs> this absolutely cracked me up as soon as I saw the email. And uh, I'm sure it's going to crack me up even more when I see it in action. 
Yeah, uh, this is an exciting amount of greatness just all on one table. And there's more than this, but this is just what I could fit here. So yeah, thank you very much once again to everyone for sending all of these things in. Your generosity does not go unappreciated. It's always exciting and humbling to receive these things. And of course, thank you to everyone who's just even made offers of sending things in. That's way more than what I actually do end up taking in. So it's all appreciated. Your support is excellent. Seeing it continue in 2021 is awesome. So thank you and stay tuned for more LGR things quite soon.